All right, back in Free Code Camp, doing the Learn CSS Colors by building a set of colored markers. Excuse me. And we're on step 81. So the border should now be visible, which it is. And if no color is set, black is used by default. So that makes sense from the previous video as to why it's actually black there. Um, to make your code more readable, it's better to set the border color explicitly. So we can do border, uh, border dash left dash color, and set that to black like so. Obviously that doesn't change anything, it's just more explicit, um, which is always good. So step 82, the border left shorthand property lets you set the left border width, style, color, um, and basically yeah, all the properties at the same time. In the sleeve CSS rule, replace um, the border left width, style, and color with just the border left. So let me just start taking off one at a time. So we want then solid and black, and then I can delete these two down here. And you'll see this will still have the same effect. So we're still doing 10 pixels um, width, solid line, and the black color. And there we go. Step 83, now your marker is looking good, but to make it even more realistic, you can change the border style to double solid borders. So, um, oh, so here, rather than solid, we can do double. And there you go, we can see we've got uh, a double border there. Perfect. Step 84, the black color of the border looks pretty harsh against the more transparent sleeve. So we can use the alpha channel to lower the opacity. So RGB A, and we can do, so it'd be 0, 0, 0, and then 75%. So that's black with a 75% opacity. Perfect. So step 85, awesome, your red marker is looking good. Now all you need to do is add the caps and the sleeves to the other markers. So let's add in these as well. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them. And these are between the marker green and the marker blue, like so. And you can see the CSS has been applied to all of these now, which is great. So step 86, one last thing you need to do is add a slight shadow to each of the marker to make them look more realistic. And essentially that will be box shadow. It lets you apply one or more shadows around an element. And here's the basic syntax of the box shadow. Offset X, so on the X axis, offset Y, and then the color. So on red here, we want a new rule, so box dash shadow, and the values will be five pixels, five pixels, and red, like so. And there you go, you can see there's our box shadow, um, but as you can see, it's just a red box slightly offset. So you can see, yeah, it's five pixels across and five pixels down. Um, you can obviously use negative options here as well and that will be five pixels up and to the left and as they've suggested and step 88 notice that the edge edges of the shadow um, are sharp so as you can see here that's a 90 degree angle that's because there's an optional blur radius um, so the value if it's not included is zero and that's sharp edges and then the higher the value of blur radius um, obviously increases the blur of that so let's see, for the green one, we do a box shadow, shadow, five pixels, five pixels, five pixels, and then green, like that. And you'll see now, that looks a lot better as a shadow um, because of the blur. So if you wanted to expand the shadow out further, you can do it with the optional spread radius value. So spread radius, um, is again before the color and it defaults to zero if it's not included. So for blue, we're gonna do box dash shadow um, and we give it value zero for offset X, zero for offset Y, zero for blur radius, but five pixels for spread rate, spread radius and blue for the color. And we'll see what that looks like. And that hasn't passed. Oh, sorry, it's the commas. They're not needed um, when passing multiple uh, sort of values here. So as you can see, that's kind of spread five pixels around the whole um, of the div there. So finally, step 19, now that you're familiar with the box shadow property, you can finalize the shadows starting with one for the red marker. 
So in the dot red CSS rule, update the values for the box shadow property to be zero. So zero for offset X, zero for offset Y. Blur radius is 20 pixels, spread radius is zero, color is red. And effectively what we could do is also just leave off spread radius because it will default at zero. Um, it looks like they want us to add that in, so that's fine. Um, we'll put that there explicitly and we'll check that. And there we go. We can see we've got our nice um, shadow there now. Cool. So I'll leave it there for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.